um, in fashion drawing classes, model drawing classes, design classes. I start the model drawing learning with using something soft and just creating shapes when we build bodies. Rather than um, what you think of a fashion drawing of being, you know, those beautiful finished lines, I usually get my students comfortable with sculpting with pencil first. Hi, Samantha. Thanks for stopping by. I wonder if it was your question. I can't remember whose question it was that prompted me to make this uh, video. So please pipe in. I love to chat with you along the way. It makes it even more lively. So people may be thinking, you know, why are we working like this when we want to draw fashion? So one thing is getting to understand the body. You don't have to be able to draw bodies to design fashion at all. But any kind of drawing or sketching skill you have will give you this freedom to get your ideas out on paper. And so where we would head over time with these loose drawings is to the level where you can see the sketch through the paper and you would be able to design on that body. So let's say I was doing a dress with, okay. But I, I'm going to, we're going to look at the great fashion illustrators to uh, discuss this right now. Like how does that loose, that black smudgy figure become a design illustration, right? So we'll talk about some of that and I wanna give you like um, some language about line. So here we go, hang on. So just for example, like let's say this model, you know, is, I'm doing this super quick cause this isn't what I really wanted to get to today was looking at illustrations. But I want you to get that look at like, this, these lines are on the outside, we call those contours. But what we're working on in the early weeks is more from the inside. It's almost like what you like, like to say, we're building her out of clay on paper. And also see how she's black and the paper is white? When we work this way, we're able to separate her from the paper. Whereas in our early drawing and writing experiences, the girl and the paper are kind of the same. They're both white and all we have is these lines and we feel like they need to be perfect. When we work this way, we're able to map out the body, fill it so that she's her own entity. Okay, so maybe that's like all very heady. So I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna get to what I wanted to bring up today was randomly going through this book to show you different aspects of line so that you have a little bit of a vocabulary about line. <laughs> so, um, and this is a historical progression. So there's a lot of different examples. So for example, this illustration here by Robert Passantino has only one weight of line. Well, actually that's arguable. Okay, so <laughs> I'm talking about like contours. So all of these edges in this illustration are exactly the same weight. And that creates what I tend to call um, kind of a flatness. I'll show you here too. This is also all one line weight. And you can create this weight by using like a micron pen or the pit pens that came in your kit. Oh, you know what? I was supposed to share this out into my group and I didn't. Um, let me just make sure that I do that because I promised them I would. It's just gonna take one second and it's not showing up. Hmm. Oh, I'm live streaming from the group. That's why, not from the, okay, all good. All right, so now arguably, even though all of these lines are a single weight, okay, in this illustration, there's actually these stripes on her tights and they are a different weight right? Because they're soft and thick, but they are lines. So that's an interesting uh, concept. Hello, we're talking about line today. Thanks so much for stopping by. Um, at this point, I think I'm live streaming in the group, the Freedom Fashion Group. Is that right? 
<laughs> we're talking about line. So in this illustration by E. Bernoir, check it out. The lines are uh, not all equal, right? You have thicker lines on the outside. Hi, thanks for coming. I welcome your questions along the way as well. Look, look how you have thicker lines and thinner lines. So we're going to be exploring line quality. Even the stripes of her sweater go from thick opaque lines to thinner. Oh, sorry, the focus gets a little funny. All different heavinesses of lines. Um, and let's, let's see, I'm going to find different examples. So this is Eric Stemp. Now look at his lines. Like everyone's using line differently. Do you see how his lines are almost paintbrushy? Like here, hang on. Thicker to thinner, right? So we are gonna be exploring when we get into our contour drawing exercises, you know, how we use different line weights. For example, the side seam in his shorts is very light and thin. Can you see it? Okay, but like the pocket opening has a very deep dark line right there that shows really clearly that it's crisp, separate layers. And so different line weights helps prioritize for the eye, like what to look at, like so that you're not seeing everything all at once. I feel like when all the line weights are exactly the same, you sort of see everything all at once. Here's another kind of line quality. Um, it's interesting how here they're using lines as shadow. Okay, when we paint, we'll use um, shapes of tone instead of, these are shapes of line <laughs> as shading. Um, and you can definitely see there are darker lines and super light lines. And look how even he, he redrew the sleeve twice. You know, and it gives this like living feeling to the sketch that it's not all perfect. This is Angelo Londel. This book is called 100 Years of Fashion Illustration. I'm going to pull out some others. Um, definitely. Okay, so you really feel how different people handle line. So actually... So this is more like the graphite that we're using in the early weeks. You see how it's smudgy and thick? So this is probably pastel or the side of a pencil. But like, you won't get this kind of line when you hold your pencil like you're writing, when you're drawing with your fingers. You get this kind of line when you draw with your arm. Not only does working with your arm help you get deep dark shadows, like in sweeping motions. Um, whereas when you're working with your hand, you tend to work on small details. Like I'm sure they worked with his fine fingers to do the pattern, but look at these shadows. You can see that this is smudged a little, rubbed with his finger. So that's a great example. Here he used two art supplies, he used pastel, and he used brown watercolor. How awesome. That's Ruth, I said he, Ruth Freeman, 1951. Now there's more, I promise you. Oh God, this is amazing. Rene Gruel, look at that. Look at the line and not only is it thicker here, but it's varying. So it's all thick and look how it tapers off into thin. How cool is that? Right? And then here, very fine lines. Um, strong sense of uh, outline, so you're really seeing the silhouette defined in a strong way. And then fine details with a fine line. Oh, Allie, it's okay. Wait, are you back on now? And if you think about it, even this orange box is a line. By the way, I'm going to keep this replay up. I don't know if you can hear me, though, because I don't know if you're still with us. Facebook Live isn't perfect, that's for sure. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I'm really happy you're here with us, Allie. This is Bernard Blossac. Um, This looks like a fine, 
pen? Let's see. It doesn't say, but what do you think, guys? Yeah, different, different effects, different styles, different line maybe for different kinds of fabrics as well. Um, now there was, it's funny, as I flipped through it earlier, I was hitting different examples. Um, I'm just going to try to find one of them. Um, hmm. Okay, so here's an interesting example of sometimes you're going to find that there is no line. Okay, obviously there are stripes here. But there are no lines. If you look at the outline, there is no line. Sometimes the only line is where a shape meets the paper. The edge of a shape is the only line you have sometimes. Obviously, these bricks are lines. And like, obviously, there's a hem to this skirt. But if I zoom up close, that edge is just, let me see, I'm curious how... Well, I could focus. The edge of that skirt is not even a line. Isn't that amazing? It's actually just white. But we we see it as a line. And likewise, like there's skin. We think of coloring books, right? We grow up with coloring books where there's like an outline and then we color it in. There is no black outline on this arm. There is only a brown arm. And I just think that's a wonderful distinction for you to start noticing when you observe fashion illustrations because you have access to all of these different ways of drawing. Hang on, I'm going to move my camera a little bit. Um, hmm, the lighting is not exactly as I would like it, but this one, see how heavy the color is? This is a great example of gouache used, not opaque, well, almost opaque. So these lines, again, are primarily, you know, the edges of shapes that are your lines. Does that make sense to you guys? I'd love to like, maybe you could throw me an emoji. When the edge of a shape is what the line is, rather than, like on these, lines are lines. Do you know what I mean? Black lines on white paper. Here, the edge of the purple skirt is a line you know and then these lines that uh, can you see these shadows that are drawn in Hang on. those are actually added after <laughs> thanks <laughs> so line is an interesting thing okay so let's keep going with that there are very few lines in this illustration this is Marcel Vitre Harper's Bazaar 1940 you see there are no um outlines here she just used yellow he just used yellow paint but then if you zoom in you'll see oh there's a little black line so we're kind of reinventing hi Allie. we're sort of reinventing what line means to us like the edge of her lip is a line but it's not a black line and it's not separate from the lip um the chin is definitely a line and I feel like these lines, oh, they might have been done with pen and ink or with a fine paintbrush. The interesting thing with fine paintbrushes is if they're very fine, they don't hold a lot of liquid. So you can only get so long before you run out of paint and have to dip again. Look at the hand. This is so cool. I love it. All right, let's find more. Ooh, this is Pierre Morgue, Harper's Bazaar, 1940, same year, totally different style. This is very relevant for how we work in class because I'm going to teach you how usually a garment will be one flat color. Even if it's a printed garment, we'll find like a base color to lay down. And then we'll use um, a shadow tone and a light tone of that color. And then a few sharp shadows. Look at this. So thick line, expressive line, and then like this lighter line. And, oh, man. I know it's a lot to take in all at once, maybe in the beginning. But you can have so much fun exploring this. Look how her hair is, like, opaque black. And then it actually has some highlights on it, like shine. Little gray bits of shine. Beautiful. 
Now, these fashion illustrations aren't all design illustrations. Okay, oh, this is a great example of something I wanted to show you before this was over. And please pipe in if you have questions or anything. This illustration doesn't have line in the sense of, you know, line by itself. I mean, this could have been made from cutout paper, right? In fact, I'm curious how... This is Tom Purvis, 1935. It said, Purvis's dramatically simplified style was well suited to the requirements of large scale advertising posters. Isn't that amazing? And by the way, if you ever comment or ask a question in this group um, on a Facebook Live, sometimes it takes a long time for the comments to show up. So I just wanted to mention that. Check this out. These are like very wet, bold, huge lines. And these are very crisp, tiny lines. And everything in its own color. No, here, Erte. Erte was like the first fashion illustrator that I ever got a book of when I first moved to New York City and was, wasn't was even a fashion student yet. I was only a design student. So look at this. There are no lines per se. It's just like a painting. But then look how the fur is rendered with lines, white lines on the purple and black lines on the edge. So whenever we render a texture, this is a good example of something I always say, the texture is not only on the surface where like these little white lines are for the fur, texture also needs to be expressed in the contour, in the outline. And here we see fur and we see fur reiterating. So it becomes very 3D and textural. Um, I want, oh, these are amazing because there's very little line at all. This is Ruth Sigrid Grofstrom. And, oh gosh, I have to wrap up in like five. So we may have to do to be continued, but there are lines, like these soft drape lines in the curtain and in the plaid of the dress. But the actual outline, oh, actually the outline of her arm has a soft line too, but it's more about shape and color. So there's all these different approaches. Some people work black and light, black and white, with line, and then other people work with, you know, no black. Um, this is Erte, again. You'll learn to recognize his work very easily, very quickly. And his magazine covers are just breathtaking. It really makes you realize how much, really makes me long for that creativity and art in the past. Ooh, so here we go, no color, right? And then the expressive line so good for fashion illustration because you're really describing the construction and look at the highlight versus the shapes of shadow which are actually created with line and then you know a line to show seams because this is a bias cut skirt um two different artists this is this one here is Polly Teague France Francis very fine lines and colored white or black backgrounds. So I'm going to wrap up because I have to head out, but I wanted to find, before we left, I wanted to show you Antonio Lopez who showed up during, that's not him, I'm just saying. <laughs> I love how these lines don't flow with, the fabric doesn't flow with her, it's just straight. Um, that's really cool. This is a great book. Uh, what is the name of this book again? 100 Years of Fashion Illustration, yes, by Kelly Blackman, Lawrence King Publisher. Great publisher for fashion books. Oh, and actually, I really would like to talk about it more. So I knew I had to leave at 5 at 440. Mats Gustafson, look, these are really just shapes. And the watercolor just kind of settles into line on the edge. Are you familiar with Mott's? He really defined an era. This is 1997. And his style is very recognizable. And minimal oh, line. <laughs> oh, 
a whole other level of line. Oh my gosh, line. You know, it's just interesting to take a topic like line and then just use that as a lens for looking through the whole book. Oh man. And the one I really wanted to show you, I think I've spent too much, oh, this, these are, are actually paper cutouts. This is Michael Roberts. Amazing, all cut paper. So again, the line is the edge. I really wanted to do a quick Antonio Lopez before we light. There we go. Just to show here, actually all these lines are the same weight, aren't they? And then you have this like white line around the black lines. Do you see that? There's like that white space. Interesting. This is pastel. And then like a fine line pen or pencil. Okay. Oh, gosh. And now I could just go on for hours. Antonio again, so recognizable. So amazing. And you know there's a movie now, right? I haven't seen it yet. I don't know if it's been released in the U.S., but there's an Antonio Lopez movie. Actually, this is his too. What a variety of style from one artist. So please post any questions or thoughts that you'd like to share with the group. We can talk more. This is Steven Stippelman. Oh, everyone I know knows him, but I haven't met him personally. These lines are all one weight, all one weight. This is Antonio again. He's a genius. Yeah, he's a genius. <laughs> I love you guys. Thanks for joining me, and we will talk more soon. So if you're feeling like, why aren't we doing lines yet? Trust me, we're getting there. I promise. Ha, ha, ha.